two new trailers came out for season two of House of the Dragon, Team Green and Team Black. And we're going to go into it here, and we're probably going to go into some spoilers later on, but initially here we're just going to go in non-spoiler territory. Let's get into this, man. Let's start with Team Green. Team Green? Yeah, the good guys, right? So Yeah, dude, I think so. What I love about this trailer is Aegon. I think by far he's the MVP. His swagger. You can see some of his attitude in this. His drip. He gets his brand new like crown helmet. Dude, it's, it's unbelievable. Awesome. I mean, if you're not Team Green, I hope this moves the needle for you. Dude, it's like the upgrade in a video game. Like, you already have the crown. Maybe you already have the helmet. And then you get that shing, little addition to it. It has a little glimmer. It's like, oh, this is what this is the power up. This is the real power. Oh, man. It's super good. I can't wait to see him armored up on our golden boy, our beautiful boy, Sunfire fire man the shiniest most golden dragon in all the land oh yeah i've been honestly dude i've never been really impressed with any of the designs of the dragons in game of thrones or house of the dragon so far like yeah mm -hmm. vagar's big whatever not that impressed. sunfire better blow me away well we see a little bit of sunfire right yeah but it's, but it's from a distance longing. profile view i don't know it's it's okay uh, He's supposed to be so beautiful. I think oh, he might be. Give him some sunlight. Boy. Hey, also, the dragon pit, man. How, how many? How quick did they get the construction crew in there <laughs> to repair this place? <laughs> Number one priority, I guess, for them. They're like, hey, listen. Rainey's made a big fucking mess in there. Somebody needs to go in there and clean it. And I guess they yeah, they got to it. I, also, on Aegon's, on Aegon's helmet here, you can just see a, like, a little bit of a dragon up top. There's like a little detail like that. I mean, I wish his armor looked as good as Damon's. You'd think as king, hopefully they'd have better armor. But I mean, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Oh, it doesn't look bad. But dude, I'll tell you right now, there's a lot about Aemon's armor that I, Aemon's, Aegon's armor that I like more than Damon's right here. If you look at it, it does look metal at least. It has that brushed, worn metal look to it. Not brushed metal, just worn metal. And yeah. uh, it's a gunmetal color. I like that a lot more than what they did with Damon, where it's just so overtly black. That, hey, remember guys, this is Team Black. Like, make his armor like a matte black it's, it doesn't yeah. look that it kind of gives me plastic dude strike me down for saying it but it kind of gives me witcher vibes a little bit uh. all right it kind of gives witcher vibes just in terms of the color and the way they did it the silhouette looks amazing but if you're talking texture and believability as armor i i give it to Aegon. it's just that one shot in this green trailer that i okay. think for sure, sure it, it looks that way but yeah, like I like I like this armor. It looks worn. Even the crown here, you know, kind of matches his armor too as well. I listened to David Lightbringer's breakdown of this trailer, and it's it's so weird because he sounds he's trying to sound like he doesn't know what's going on, which I always think is so cringe when someone knows all the spoilers. Like, hey, I wonder if this is gonna happen here. Uh, I wonder who these two people are walking down there. It's like, listen, I know who they are. I'm not gonna fucking mess around with you guys and and fake speculate. I'm not gonna waste your fucking time with that shit. Okay, we know. We all know. So then also, when he's talking on this shot here, which made me like, I, I was just questioning my life why I was even listening to him. But he talks about this shot here. He's like, oh, I can see why they made this crown the way they, they did. Because they made, they want to make it look like a, a, a ring raid from Lord of the Rings. That's why, guys. I'm like, holy <laughs> he, shit. He did I not say he, that. He, Are you serious? No joke. He did. And I I was thinking, like, this has to be a joke. Which is fine because we 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 do like straight face jokes all the time on here uh, about certain things and some people are like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "Of course we're not serious." Like, who would even say that? So I, I almost am leaning that it, it's so absurd he's lying, but I mean, well, but what's the connection? That that's like saying. so random. That's that's like that's like a you know, ten years ago I'm in high school. Like I'm so random joke. Like it, those two things are not related at all. What's the relation between a ring wraith and egg? Whatever. That's like the stupidest. Comment well, because he's on heard. dragon back. He's on dragon back, and I can see he's like a spiky crown. And they're like, oh, then he has this helmet. Okay. It, if anybody it, listening I, to this thinks that there's a connection between the design of this helmet and the ring wraiths from Lord <laughs> of the Rings or the Witch King, unsub, please. Please unsub, and thank you. Get unsub. The f or or just comment and we'll block you. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, we'll do all the work. You know, Eamon's in this trailer a little bit too. He's good. Not as good as Aegon, but yeah, he has this like, oh, I hope my uncle fights me. Ooh, I really hope he challenges me. But I, I love Aemon, dude. I love Aemon. I, I do too. Um, but that, that scene, yeah. I, I wonder what dialogue led up to that at a certain point because it's like Kristen Cole's just sitting there, and I just feel like Kristen Cole wasn't even talking about it. He's like, Aegon, like, we were literally just talking generic strategy. It's like, I would fight my uncle if it came to it. It's like, dude, we're not even talking about your uncle. Which uncle is this again? It's like, come on. Yeah, definitely on the spectrum of that kind of stuff comes up. He's just like, you know what? I could kill my uncle if I want to. You're like, dude, what the hell are you talking about? Kristen Cole probably <laughs> just said to him moments before this, you know, your sapphire eye is not that cool. Stop showing people. And then he said, I'd fight my uncle if I had to. No one asked. I, I think at this point, Kristen Cole is so stressed out, too. 
And that's probably what led him to cut his hair. He needs some, like, control of his life. He's like, oh, I'm just going to shave my head or just cut his hair or something like that, like my brother did at my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the, it was so close to your wedding. Was it the day before, the day after? He, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it was about that. Well, he shaved it. Yeah, oh, yeah, he shaved it big time. I don't know what had him so stressed out that week. I don't remember anymore. But he went to the uh-huh. bathroom, came out with a shaved head, and we all knew not to mention it right away because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it looked great. Don't get me wrong, but. Something happened there. Yeah, I wonder if then, uh, you know, this is a Christian Cole thing going on with him. You know, like I just need some control. <laughs> well, if we do, I hope uh, we get. I hope we get that sh- that scene of him in the bathroom in front of a mirror, crying his eyes out and slowly <laughs> gaining that power. And by the end, he has that little spark on his face. Like, <laughs> yeah. Now I'm me. You see, Allison throughout this, no cake shot, which is unfortunate. One of the best parts of the first trailer was that cake yeah. shot. Like, yeah. Oh, we even put it on our thumbnail because it looks so good. So well, we all knew she was hiding, hiding it. it. In season one. Yeah, we all knew she was hiding it. And then we finally got to see that little glimpse and like a Daenerys Targaryen-esque dress from season one of Game of Thrones. Can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little hidden in this. Yeah, and we definitely see some sort of funeral going on. You know, people are dressed in black. This could be King V's funeral here. You know, like we don't hear about any, I think, uh, actual funeral, pro- like a uh, 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 actual funeral That's ceremony true. either in Fire and Blood, like, like for like anybody, I think. So I'm just wondering... Who this could be for, right? Well, there are a couple funerals this could be, and I don't personally think it's King V, but it it, it could be. I don't know. It could be. Yeah, you know what? Oh, oh spoiler alert. Someone's going to die. Yeah, uh, spoiler alert. A lot of people are going to fucking die in this okay, show. Okay, well, there's a... T- <laughs> okay, well, right. I'm, no, I'm just saying for Oh, yeah, and then they're, they're the going to hold funerals for all of them. Okay, okay, right, right, right. <laughs> I know yeah. people in the comments are like, oh, you spoiled it. People are like, yeah, a lot of people are going to die. Spoiler alert. Dude, Otto, I, okay, I might be the biggest simp for Otto in all of a Song of Ice and Fire community. I honestly think he's a good guy, but a, like a good gray guy, not a like perfect guy. He's... Actually, no, scratch that. He's a perfect guy. He's never done anything wrong. I love Otto, and I want him to be the my daddy. He's perfect, yeah. He's a prince that was promised. Uh, we actually get to see another shot of the Brackens and, and Blackwoods here, which oh, I love this rivalry, just, like, going at each other, even though they're both underneath, like, the Tullys in the Riverlands. But I want to see more I Brackens. Like the, I like the concept of it, man, but they do not look very impressive to me, unless they're trying to make it seem like two pathetic houses going at each other. I'd rather see them try to hype everything up that they can, you know what I mean? I don't know. It looks okay. I know what battles coming from this or what it, I know what confrontation is going to come from that but right. it doesn't look that great uh, we get some shots of uh, Larry's strong in this too and you just got to be wondering whose, uh, <laughs> whose shoes are off you know like with Allison or with uh, Aegon there's both shots of uh, you know him you think talking he can identify to you? who enters the room like by purely scent if he has his eyes closed based on whose shoes are off I bet he can that I, like, or 95% maybe, sure that or maybe like the sound of their feet coming in he's like oh I know those. I know the sound of their footsteps. Oh, absolutely. Going to the black trailer, then. Which, dude, which one of these did you like more? Did you like the green or the black? I just wanted to ask you that. I, I like the green one more than uh, Team Black's trailer. Uh, both of them. I think we talked about this before we even start recording. Is a little underwhelming, to be honest. There's not a ton of awesome shots. I thought there was more yeah. cool action shots in the first trailer than there was for this one. But we definitely get to see more new characters in the black trailer than we did in the green, but I did like to see a little bit more of Aegon's attitude. Um, his like his crown helmet looks so badass. That's where he's oh, kind of... And, and plus, I'm a... To war simp. then. <laughs> to war then, my legion. It's I like, like how he's oh, dropped Chad- a few decibels oh. there. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that's how I see him in my mind. If I met him, I'd be looking... I'm six foot one. Okay. I'd be at his ankles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where am I? For more than one reason. <laughs> If you're at his ankles, I'm in the fucking ground. Okay, so then what'd you think of uh, uh, the black trailer? I thought the black trailer was uh, was pretty good. I I didn't think it was as interesting, kind of like you said. It's kinda, to me, it's just showing me a montage of uh, of like fan favorite characters. Because for some ungodly reason, dude, everybody's just a simp for the blacks. They're just oh, 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 just sucking <laughs> off the blacks yeah, all day right. and nights. And I'm not talking about the Valerians, but I guess I am now since they're on team uh, team black. black. And I just listen. I know you said. That, that shot of Damon from earlier is the only reason why the armor looks kind of plasky. This and armor looks we, fine right here. We do, It looks better. But those weird shoulder pieces, those textured ones, they still kind of look off. I'll give it to you, man. The rest of the armor definitely looks more metal and more solid. But something about it is just, it doesn't sit right with me. Like I said, the silhouette is amazing. Damon's long hair. He's got the Super Saiyan 3 thing going on. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. oh, I don't know. Damon's still cool. I still love Damon. He's the best character on Team Black. He is the best character on Team Black. Also, his shoulders here. I like it when they keep them there versus when they remove them like he's at the Stepstones. It kind of makes sense. He needs more mobility. But I love 
the shoulders, and the helmet without the wings. When he's like full armored up like he perfect. was at the tourney, it's a little too much. This is like the perfect amount right here. I, so we get to see like a bunch of new characters in the Team Black trailer. We see Allison's supposedly older brother who looks like significantly younger than her, which I don't know if they'll- Yes, he does. He, he's supposed to be the guy that was at the tournament in season one, you know, the, uh, the one jousting that- Damon yep. hits so Gwen Hightower here. I, I wouldn't say it was a complaint, but there's people talking about why we didn't get to see a lot of the extended uh, Hightower family in season one or whatever. They didn't talk about Otto's nephew and then Otto's son. So I guess yeah, you're getting it here, boys. And then I think they're changing a little bit because I think at the end of season one, she sends Jason Luke away from Dragonstone, and it looks like here in this shot and also at the funeral for Luke, we see Jace there, right? And then we also see Jace up at the wall. So it's kind of weird, like the timeline where he's going to be jumping around. Or I don't. I, it's just confusing where these shots are in chronological order. But this is we're not spoiling anything. You know, we're not doing any spoilers. But we see the dragon seeds here. Um, yep, this is them seeds, sitting around here. So th there's a couple shots. It's funny that and they try to make it look like they're in the same room, but they're not. You know, like when she's at the table oh, yeah. with these dragon seeds, and all of a sudden Damon comes and looks at her. It's like yeah, Damon wasn't at that table. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was not. And also, I mean, yeah. earlier at the beginning of the, the green trailer, we see uh, Vagar swooping down, and you can't see who's riding it. And then they <laughs> cut to Kristen Cole, like, ah, riding a horse. Yeah. As if he's riding Vagar. It's like, oh, dude, Kristen Cole, the the hero the hero of old, finally he's arrived, the dragon rider of legend. It's like, no, no, no. I don't understand those trick shots. You're not fooling anybody. And if that's not the intention, definitely strange. Dude, real quick, I want to say Corliss is looking rough. I don't know what his deal is in this trailer. He's uh, He's got a sickle cell or what he's got going on, but something's, something happened to this guy. And I'm not talking about the red fever or whatever. What was that place called? Or what was that fever called he had? Oh, yeah, I don't know what it was called. The thing Ellie, that he had. Ellie fever. Or... I think it was like a, a nagging wife, whatever, fever, because he's like, I do not want to go back. <laughs> Just tell him I'm sick. I'm going to be out in the seas a little bit longer. Well, dude, what do you expect? I guess, yeah, if this he probably would look this gaunt after. How long have they been married? Like, 20, 30 years of constant mental mind probe domination from the kingdom of the crystal skull. <laughs> I should have been queen. <laughs> okay, yes, okay. I know. I Renice, we talked about it. We talk about it almost every fucking day. Every day. Um, yeah. I, okay. So I like, I think someone else mentioned this uh, on a live stream I was listening to. I do like the brighter colors. Not everything has to be so drab and dark looking. You know, in uh, Song of Ice and Fire, and in the medieval times, dark ages, whatever, they actually had dark very like, bright colors. Yeah, yeah. Dark ages, you know, down south. Area. Okay, yeah. But they're very bright color clothes, right? They looked like vibrant. They weren't all just, you know, drabbed with black and dark muted colors. But yes, yeah, so I like that Corlys is, you know, his drips on point here. Also, Dude, he has this little, a... he just handed the queen pin here. Yep, yep. Covered it's, by it's his dreads. Cool. And I do agree with your, with your color thing too, but it's such a, it's such like a fine line to ride in a, like a TV production, you know, because it can yes. come off when it's too bright and whatever. Again, I'll reference it again. It can come off like The Witcher if you don't do it like perfectly. And so, yeah, yeah this this is done well. Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. Usually their costume design is like great. So I, I have faith they could do it. I want to know, like, so you can see the wig, too, for Corliss. I didn't have an issue with, I guess, the wigs. Some people are like, they're awful. I'm like, well, I don't know, like kind of look like the same as the guy from uh, Walking Dead. I've never watched it, but I know this guy with the tiger has like these big dreads. Do people complain about his wig? Oh, I guess I didn't even know. See, I didn't even know that was a wig. I, I also thought... I don't know. The, maybe it's not. I, I just, I've, I've seen The Walking Dead, and to me, yeah, it looks the same. I don't... I remember hearing about this wig drama in the first season, too, <laughs> and I had issues with a lot of these characters compared to the book versions in season one, and uh, it, that was not one of them. It definitely wasn't one. I mean, dude, you guys, how many of you guys watching this video right now are just simps for Daenerys Targaryen, played by Amelia Clark, who clearly oh. wore braces for like three to four years of her life, <laughs> and her eyebrows are as dark as the night sky. You know, she clearly yeah. just bleached her hair. They couldn't just go Thor 1 from the MCU, Thor 1, blonde eyebrows. Dude, underrated. Everybody makes fun of Thor 1, you know, Chris Hemsworth for those blonde eyebrows. 
they look fucking great. I like that Matt Smith has like no eyebrows because yeah. then it almost looks like he has you know blonde hair there, so he looks the most accurate. And also, people are like, "Oh, you don't like that they race swapped uh, their characters? You're so racist!" Like, no, listen, I'm literally complaining about every little thing they change when they don't have purple eyebrows or purple, when they don't have purple eyes. I complain about it. You know, if they yes, don't have Targaryens. like if they change the hair color of Rhaenys, I hate that. She's supposed to have black hair. I don't like that some of these uh, dragon seeds they're changing, even like the one of the white skinned dragon seeds they're changing his hair color and I'm like what's going on here like I, I don't know I just like consistency and that makes sense in the book so that's where it makes sense for me because uh, I don't know I'm just thinking with my brain when I'm watching this stuff oh, flex. well even like uh, I guess in, in Game of Thrones like Ned he's not supposed to have like more like brown hair it's supposed to have like black hair yeah it's black right? the Starks are clearly yeah. black because yeah it's kind of like Rob Rob is notably having brown hair, which is a trait of the Tullys, right? Like he's, he's yeah, he looks way more like a Tully than he does a Stark, yeah. Yeah, but but then you bring that same comparison over to the show, and it's like, yeah, that's true that Jon Snow looks more like a Stark or how Starks are described in the books, but his father does, does not look like that. So it's yeah, kind of right. I mean, same with Bran, right? Same exact thing with Bran. So then in this trailer too, we get to see you know most likely it's going to be a Stark here and. Oh, oh this is spo- you spoiling it. Dude, look at the wall. So one, the guy on the right is clearly Jace, right, uh, yeah. going up there. And if you're not in all black and that's Jace, he's clearly not taking the black, you know, or you guys really think he's going to be taking the black, <laughs> that he's all in black. <laughs> so the person he's going to be on to the left of is, uh, oh, it looks like it's ice. You see that? Yeah, Pause yeah. It perfectly. It's, it's, all right, spoiler alert. Yeah, it's it's the Lord it's of Winter all the time. Yeah, it's, I don't and know. He, he, we did they mention Cregan in season one? Okay, yeah, we can say Cregan Stark, right? And yeah, yeah, he's not even wearing his black cloak. Obviously, it's not a member of the Night's Watch. I guess maybe it could be a special position person or an escort or something down here, but... Oh, escort from Molestown. Dude, <laughs> they're allowed to have sex. It's not a part of the vow. How many times do we have to say it? I don't like that they're just, like, playing the hits here. You know, oh, the wall. Oh, do you guys remember the wall? It's like, you didn't need to. This is not in the books, so Dude, they, they, I can't really spoil best, anything what's going to go on here. But no, I, the, best, the best example of it, yeah, the wall stuff is not in the books at all. And we did get some kind of like a leak that suggests that maybe we'll, well see some. Uh, no, it's not yeah. a spoiler. It, there, yeah. There's no, no confirmation. We might, because I mean, the wall's right there. We might see something related to the White Walkers. And yeah. I think if that's the case, which is, I'm almost in the camp where I don't think that's going to happen. It's a huge mistake. I mean, the White Walkers were the biggest blunder of Game of Thrones. So if they bring that up and they show us that now, it's just going to remind people. Why would you want to remind someone of a total failure? So kind of an odd choice there, too. Yeah, it's just like the prophecy of the knife, right? Why do you want to remind anybody of, about the, the, the horrible ending of Game of Thrones? You know, oh, there's yeah, going to no be need. a long night. Like, shut up, just just focus on this. Focus it's on this. Long, Get everyone to... <laughs> long night. Literally one night. It was taken care of in one night. It's like that you hanging out with your friends and you're like, you remember that time I betrayed you guys? It's like, shut the fuck up. We were having a good time here until you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, go home. Oh, also, we get this weird shot of Aegon. Um, it looks like maybe in the dungeons of King's Landing, just based off the shot. And uh, he's smashing Logging some person. Boy. Yeah. Just like, who's yeah, over he's, in front of him? He's, spank- he's about to spank it with this like mace or something. You guys, hey, everyone, right now, you spank that like button, spank that subscribe button. If, uh, oh, dude, absolutely. Right. Just, yeah, look at that face. Oh, oh I went in. <laughs> so funny. I don't know. Um, but we get a lot of Rhaenyra on Dragonback, different than the books. So I can't really spoil what's going to be happening with her, but she's traveling a lot more than she is in uh, the original source material. So I'm curious what things are going to be changing and uh, how she's going to be like more active in the dance here. All right. I think that's enough for the non-spoiler. Let's go into some spoilers here. We'll get a little more detail with all these shots. Let's go back to the green trailer for a minute. Yeah. So the the biggest one that we can talk about that we've kind of gotten the leak of what's going to be for. So this is spoilers for the books and spoilers potentially for the show, right? So in the first green trailer, I think that's blood and cheese, you know, rolling up underneath uh, the dungeons. And then I also think that's a shot of Damon Payne, one of the guards of the city watch to like, hey, go get that. You know, that guy we used to call blood, who's like a maniac and literally do anything for money. Yeah, get that guy and uh, follow this other guy I hired and go uh, go make a mess upstairs. Yeah, you know? go make a mess. Just make them right. Just kill one of the boys. Kill one of the boys. And that's why I said earlier, I think I don't think that's going to be King V's funeral that we see. I think that is the funeral yes, of sure. Jaharis. I, I mean, it could be King V, sure, but I think it's Jaharis. I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of references to blood and cheese in this trailer. I think more so than I would have thought they would have give given away because that's like probably going to be the most shocking moment in this season. At least I think it would be the most shocking moment. I mean, they're going to kill the shit out of a kid. 
And if they stay true to the books, too, I think they're going to imply that blood is going to grape the young daughter of, uh, you know, Aegon. So if they, if they go through with that, man, that's got to be the most shocking thing from the season, I think. And I think they're hinting at it a little bit harder. I would have liked to have seen that come out of left field personally completely if I didn't know what was going on. Oh, and yeah. If you're, if you're in the Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon online community, there's like next to no chance that you don't know about this event now. Like, how would you? Yeah, I, Go ahead. yeah I remember in season one, uh, when because I, I didn't when House of Dragon was coming out, I didn't re listen to anything that was, you know, the Dance of Dragons related, right? Anything to do with the Civil War. I wanted to kind of go in cold again, trying to avoid any kind of spoilers. As soon as season one ended, I, you know, re basically re listened to everything just because, like, there's no way avoiding spoilers yeah, at this point. I might as well just get spoiled for it all. But I remember Blood and Cheese when I first was listening, um, like from like a like when we first were listening to everything Game of Thrones related, I remember Blood and Cheese was like this horrific event. And I was thinking, that's probably going to happen here at the end of season one. Cause we saw those rats always throughout King's Landing. Um, yeah. There's shots of it. I was Such like, oh, a gonna, rat catcher. Yeah, I was going to be like, oh, they're, they're going to have it right at the end. And I totally forgot about the whole, you know, uh, Aemond killing Luke, you know, to start the Civil War. Or start that was a great event. It oh, wasn't yes, it's, to leave it's off. a great I'm way glad, to end it. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad they did that. But in Blood and Cheese is going to be good, too. It'll, it's probably going to be pretty dang close to the opener. What are you well, going to do to him, Blood? I'm going to grape the daughter and kill the son. Does oh, that sound the... good? Is that good cheese? What? I do good. You do great, Blood. That's my, that's my blood <laughs> cheese. Oh, which one's the son? There's three of them. All run you now. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I would love it to be like a Looney Tunes thing, like... Come on, blood! You gotta kill one of them. Hurry up! He's like, oh, I oh, don't know. Oh, they're all so beautiful. Which one do you want, Helena? Which one do you want? Just like the... <laughs> that'd be that'd be ideal for me. I'd but take, yeah, I'd take it. so we were kind of talked about it. You know, I was referencing it before, but I want Aegon to go on a journey in this. You know, he goes from like kind of shitty guy to after his. Um, after his son is killed in front of his wife or sister wife, then he kind of goes, I'm going to fuck shit up. I'm actually going to like, I'm, I'm focused now and I actually want revenge versus like his before attitude of like, eh, I don't care. This is all fun and games. You know, I want to see that. I do too. I want to see that as well. And I, we, 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 you and me talk about this a lot too. Aegon is not Joffrey. He's not like some maniac psycho, like sadist or whatever. He is kind of a fuck off. He's a playboy. And then he's, I want him to become this guy who's seriously invested in the war. I'm not saying he has to be a master strategist and a giga chad. That's not what I need. But you do right. want to see that character development for him. You know, it's not, it doesn't need to fit some particular archetype. But if we see his development in a significant way like that, it could be really compelling. And it's needed, especially because we need some people on Team Green that are maybe not sympathetic necessarily, but, you know, people like we just described who you can like really get behind their motivation. Like maybe I don't like him. But, I, dude, I understand. Like, his son was just beheaded. You know what I mean? They took a the dullest right. knife they could find and slowly sawed that thing off. And blood loved every second of it. And, <laughs> yeah. it, it, well, you know what I mean? And so I think we I think we need that. And plus, you know, Kristen Cole, he's one of the most notable members of Team Green. And I really can't imagine him becoming a sympathetic character. And the way they've, <sighs> like, decided mm -hmm. to change Allison yeah. with this whole, like, I'm basically just Rhaenyra on Team Green. I don't think she's a candidate for it really either. Same with Otto. What could they do with him? I think Aegon's the guy that they need to develop to really bolster up Team Green. Because dude, you and me, we're green boys. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, we're green boys. We want to. We're giving people benefit of the doubt. I'm giving people benefit of the doubt on Team Black as well. I like it that it's gray. And uh, I think a lot of people are convinced by the music that's being played in every scene. Who's the good guys and bad guys, right? Oh, these are the good guys because uh, it's uplifting when Rhaenyra's doing something, but when Allison's doing something, it's so sinister and evil. And she's also um, going against Rhaenyra, who clearly, you know, we have a huge focus on within the series. So she's kind of the de facto main character. But Kristen Cole, he should be a sympathetic character, but they mishandle him in certain ways to make him non-sympathetic. On purpose. So this show, in my opinion, is black propaganda, you know, and they might argue that the books is green propaganda. But I don't get why people are so maybe put off or don't like the the idea of having gray characters fight each other. It's like, yeah, that's fun. Like, because then it's like, oh, who's right or wrong? It's like, who do I back? I think that's the most brain dead take of all time. Who do I cheer for? I don't know rub your brain cells together and start thinking about the logical reasonings why they can't they, doing it anybody watching this too let us know in the comments if you are part of any facebook groups of any of these fandoms it doesn't need to be house of the dragon or game of thrones but anything 
people literally do. You will see people make posts like I don't get it. Like which get which who is the good guy and who's the bad guy? People can't wrap their brains around the fact that like, oh, it's supposed to be ambiguous or maybe like these characters are so dynamic that you can't tell and isn't supposed to be a clear cut option yet. Like, yeah, you're not supposed to know. And if you don't know and you'd why would you ask to figure out something like that? Ah, we're going off a little bit on this, but it's uh, it's infuriating yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's the same people that like will back Ned Stark during his kind of like coup attempt against Joffrey um, are the ones backing Rhaenyra and Damon, even though if you follow Ned's logic, Vaymond is the one you should be aligned with in season one of House of Dragon, you know? So right. it's just, it, it's inconsistent logic. It's just all emotionally driven, which is unfortunate because uh, that's how most people think, I guess. I think that's the only thing like spoilers I want to go into in. Uh, the green trailer, but in the black trailer, you know, we get those dragon seeds, right? And you can see that, uh, who is it? Uh, Hugh Hammer. Uh, I think yeah, Hugh Hammer. Hugh Hammer on the right. I mean, he's the biggest one, so it's got to be him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with a beard. I can't wait. Um, you know, he has a kind of a fun, like, little side thing going on when he goes out to war. And uh, it, we are spoiling at this point, you know, but when he, like, rebels and just does his own thing. And I do like the whole thing of, like, some prophecy he hears about the hammer will take down the dragon yeah, and it's like kind of a thing for uh, for you, robert it later <laughs> it's awesome you know it's like oh, i know it is awesome little... oh yeah okay this is one thing i don't like we were talking about the hair i think earlier i don't like that the hall boys because we've seen both of them been casted you know adam and alan of hall they have black hair they, you know they have the whatever you know black skin like corliss and you know lanor and lena but why the black hair just keep I mean, the listen, white hair. They have white I, hair in the in the in the what's it called in the books. Just keep it. Ah, I I don't understand it. Are yeah, the changes confused. I, I'm getting <laughs> confused by the black people with white hair. Oh, I don't know which one's which. That's so cringe. What? Give the audience some more credit. Yeah, give us more credit. I don't understand why they make these choices either. Why would they stop here? See, this, I mean, look at the table right now. It's not like I would almost think if in a normal situation it could be like a budgetary restraint or something like that. But I mean, clearly that's not a factor here. And plus, we have how many of these wigs still going around. And this is probably a wig too, to be honest with you. This is probably a wig. Yes. It's just, it's just <laughs> yeah. a black wig instead. So I don't know. I, it's, I don't care to think about it because it's so stupid. I don't even know. Like it's the same with changing Rhaenys's hair color to white. Why did they do that? Just to make sure, you know, like the, the Targaryen, like she's <laughs> yeah, half Targaryen, I guess. I mean, it's the same yeah. with, uh, what's his name? What's her name? Emma, you know, King V's first wife. Isn't she supposed to have black hair as well? Uh, <sighs> Or my, I, I could be wrong about that. I just know no. She's I think half. yeah, she's half Aaron. I think she has white hair, but she is half Aaron, so she's not like a you know pure blooded Targaryen like uh, like I guess some of these other characters are, or like way more highly you know whatever ratio in their blood Targaryens. But like okay, so yeah, then the way, first, I don't understand the, the the closest person to us too. This is supposed to be all the white, but they, they he has like a bunch of nicknames because he's like this drunkard or drunkard uh, character. Again, no white hair, which, I mean, if you have white hair, doesn't that, isn't that the biggest, like, red flag to people? Like, oh, this is Targaryen, this is Dragon Rider. So I guess Rhaenys gets the white hair, but these characters don't. I just, I love to hear the behind-the-scenes reasoning behind it. I do. They probably didn't even give it any thought. It's just like, well, this will be something a little bit different. So there aren't so many white hair people on screen. Maybe they thought it'd be confusing. I Like you said earlier, I, dude, I don't know. Yeah. And then so Aegon, remember, he's hitting that guy. I don't know if we mentioned this earlier that I think that's blood and like that's blood he finally found. Uh, yeah. I think Larry's, you can see him behind him that he's finding him and just taking out his anger for this guy killing his son. Cool. Yeah, yeah, dude. And you know what? I don't blame him. And so this is this could be the moment we see right here. We're talking about this, like this character shift moment. And I I hope that's the case. This could be it. This could be the catalyst that we actually want. And see that Larry's too, man. He's actually a pretty dynamic character. It's kind of like what you said earlier, though, about how they just want to harken back to everything in Game of Thrones, like how Larys is basically kind of like a Littlefinger-esque character, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. I, he is that in the books kind of, too, but it's it definitely feels more different in the book than this feels in the show. Uh, yeah, and I that might not even be intentional. That's just a whatever. Well, no, but in this show... It feels fetish driven what, you know, for his motivations. Like, well, I'm going to give you all this information so I can see your feet versus in the books where it feels like he is uh, doing all this to gain power. You know, dude, smartphones don't exist, man. It's not like he has like this massive library of feet pics I and mean, he's got to take it oh. where he can get it. Also, the, the concept of the foot fetish thing in general is hilarious. Like, I have uh. a club foot, therefore I'm attracted to feet. Is that how that works? Yeah. 
Like if, I, if I ever lose a limb or if I ever get some kind of an illness, am I gonna have? Am I gonna have a fetish for that thing now? It's too on the nose. It's too on the nose. Yeah. That he. Well, and you know, spoiler alert, because we're going into this still here when Larry's wants to, you know, be executed. He said, "Cut off my foot, please. I don't want to like die with this disgusting foot still left on me." Yeah, he hates his club foot. My foot. Yeah, it's very strange. So we get a shot at the beginning of the trailer too of you know, Rhaenyra, what seems like the remains of, of Luke. But we, we see, I think it's just his dragon, is it Erex? And we don't see his body. And in the books, we don't ever recover the body. It's just like we never know what happened to him. So it looks like a bigger, you know, thing on the ground there. It looks like it might be like the wing or a part of the dragon over there at Storm's End. So still, there might be a uh, Luke is actually a simple jack out in the Stormlands. We still might have that available. Yeah, to us. that might be the case. Well, sure. I mean, this the same thing is true of Damon, right? Like they never recovered Damon's body. Eventually, when him and Aemon, you know, go and double into dildo each other up on the dragons and die, quote unquote, right. die, right? Like, who knows? They might change all that kind of stuff. And I, I wouldn't mind if they do that with Luke. It's not like it's not like he's still around and he has all this potential waiting for him in the future. So it's 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 still a consequential event, even if he is a simpleton. That's still the death of Rhaenyra's son. So I, I'm okay with that. If they really yeah. want to go that route, and and I think we talked about it before the spoilers about the White Walkers. So, yeah, in the books, there's no White Walkers and nothing about it. But I just don't care, dude. Do not show me White Walkers, or even they won't show us White Walkers. They might show us Whites, right? But like, if they show us a White Walker, that's too much. That's too. Well, if they show us much. a White, that's too much. Why are they even at the Wall? I like maybe we could hear about them visiting the Wall. Like, why is he there? Does it matter? Is Cregan like, uh, I don't know if I trust you, Targaryen. Why don't I take you up like a few hundred miles? Like, let's take a let's take two, three weeks out of our life in the middle of this war just so I can show you the hardships we go through in the north. Like, that's that. What's that doing? Yeah. That's, that's not affecting anything. The entire time Jace is up here, I don't care how big of a compassionate person he is. The whole time he's like thinking, like, fuck, 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 fuck. We got to get back, man. Like, I'm my family's <laughs> yeah. dying. It's like, this is yeah. a war for the Seven Kingdoms. And Kring and Starks just being a little bitch like the rest of the Starks. Yeah, I think, you know, they're supposed to have a bro out kind of session up there. So there needs to be some time for them to develop some sort of like, dude, bro, these kind of rules. Like, we should hang out more. So I, th there needs to be that. But at the same time, yeah, how do, how, because like there's that other storyline, a possibility, because, you know, there's, there's three different telling of the events that happen with Jace up there in Winterfell. One of them in him falling in love with, I forgot her name, something Snow. It's basically the bastard sister of Cregan Stark. And then, you know, him broing out with Cregan Sarah Stark. Snow, if right? you can have both, what's it? Is it Sarah Snow? Yeah, it might be Sarah Snow. It's something with an S, I think. Okay, but okay. E either way, if he falls in love with a girl and also bros out, like, you're spending way too much time up there. You're not focused. You're basically like Rob Stark again, just like focusing on your like self pleasures then getting <laughs> it's back worse to than war, Rob Stark. I mean, there's a war going down the southern half of the continent. He's on a fucking gaycation up here, chilling with the boy and the girl up on the wall. Like you couldn't yeah. be further away from the conflict in all ways. But think about this too. You're used to like all this heat and like uh like summer esque weather and you're up in the winter as well. I think it couldn't be more of a distraction. It's like so out of sight, out of mind. It's crazy. It makes me wonder how much screen time we're really gonna see up here. Like how much of the of the runtime of this season is this going to eat up? <laughs> if right. it's a lot, I don't know. It doesn't sound good for me. I I hope they kind of move away from the fact that the black or you know team black is supposed to be so alt altruistic. Like, oh, we, we want to protect the realm and take the throne because we have the prophecy on our side and King V really wanted us to be uh, the rightful heirs. So just like so many things are going for team black that, you know, normies, I'm sure like, oh, yeah, well, they're the good guys. They're the ones trying to protect us from the Night King. And, and we believe in the Night King because we've seen you know, 200 years in the future when Danny has to fight or, you know, whenever Danny, but, you know, everyone else has to fight the White Walkers. So I, I don't know. I just take well, no, dude, I, I out of this. It's, it's annoying. Like, it's like we say, it's like they're really like choreographing or like telegraphing for the audience. Like, yeah, the blacks are the good guys and the greens, are the bad guys. And the only thing we get, it, it, it's just so skewed because, OK, like the team black is overall in, uh, meant to be portrayed as like lawful good, really. And Rhaenyra yeah. is like totally justified so far. She's not even fat. She's not even the obese. <laughs> Oh, Queen, check, check out our video where, where we're begging for oh. Thickums, uh, Thickums, Rhaenyra. Dude, absolutely. She is supposed to be fat as fuck. Like, oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, they're supposed to be portrayed as like this lawful good. And then Damon is like that little tiny counterbalance where it's like, oh, see, they have like an anti hero or an anti villain in their thing, yes. like wild card. It's like, that's not enough. Meanwhile, 
you have the greens who are supposed to all be portrayed as like these basically self-interested villains and then the only counter to that you have is Alicent, who le- genuinely believes that on his deathbed, King V legitimately changed his mind to Aegon. And we know that's not true, but we're supposed to believe that Alicent believes that. And so it's like that just it just it just doesn't jive. And that change right there in a vacuum. I'm OK with that change, actually, for Alicent, if they really wanted to go that route, but not mm-hmm. at the expense of making all of Team Green like completely evil and non-sympathetic. Like if they were going to do anything, if I, they got my way. There would be a lot more sympathy on Team Green, like we were talking about with Aegon. Make Aegon that sympathetic character, and then keep Alicent as like the ruthless bitch. But it's kind of a powerful, in a powerful way, how she's supposed to be. And they should have kept the age difference between her and Rhaenyra as well. She yep. was given hanky cranky happy endings to the old King Jaehaerys, well into the later years of his life. That's probably the last thing that happened to him before he died. And in this, it's like she would have had to have been like eight years old when he was alive. So it's, it's seriously, it just doesn't jive. Some of these changes don't make yeah. sense. Well, the, also the banners, right? They have the, which I like the team greens banners. Like, so in the, the books, it's supposed to be a gold dragon on a black background in here. It's the gold dragon on the green background to like more emphasize the green team, which is fine. I, that, I do, that doesn't it bother looks me. Good. What bothers me though, is that Rhaenyra just keeps her colors the same because the whole reason why they even change their colors is because they're killing their own guys out there. Cause everyone's black and red, you know, both, both parties are claiming to be the true Targaryens. So if Team Green moves away from it and Rhaenyra keeps her sigil the same as the uh, like you know authentic or the original Targaryen yeah. sigil, it just like makes again it's for it's like iconography for the viewers to look at it and go, oh yeah, they're the real good guys because they're like the the same yeah, the true Targaryen. um, Targaryens. So and the I understand why they don't want to do the exact book one where it's like it's quartered where you have two Targaryen sigils with. Uh, Valerian or Valarian uh, sigil of the um, the seahorse, and then also the Aaron blue in one other corner. That that's really busy. But what they could have done is something like with uh, that Joffrey has in Game of Thrones, where you have the lion and the uh, the stag are kind of like holding hands, or they're like kind of facing each other, right? You could have done something like that, yeah, and people that weren't cool. confused by that when you had three Baratheon sigils going on in season two of House or in season two of Game of Thrones with Renly's, Stannis's, and Joffrey's all Baratheons going after each other. Just kept them different color schemes. That's all you have to do. Yeah, and that's you know that that's a sad part too. Is like in a vacuum, the whole banner change thing. It'd probably be like cool to me because again, I think the green behind the gold looks really cool. I think it's a great yeah. color scheme. It makes it different enough. But we just know now because of like how skewed it is. We just know that's the way it is. And it's yeah. And you know what's funny too about the like the book version of all this? Uh, we we talk about making the greens more sympathetic, but that's not really how it was in the book. If anything, they just had team black being more uh malicious. Right, like Team right. Black seem more unreasonable, so that would work as well. I guess, it, I guess, if the show really wanted to make itself unique, that's what I'm talking about. They could have had Team Black kind of stay as this kind of good ish team, and then just make Green also a good ish team. Versus the book, where both are pretty like non sympathetic, and it's kind of fun to see them clash heads. So I don't yeah. know. That's that's kind of where I stand on the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's be clear. We're excited for season two. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. Cannot wait. I love this universe. We have a whole channel dedicated to this. I can't wait. Break down every single episode. Let us know if you want us to go through. If you got this far, you're the true guys here. Uh, but let us know. I think we're going to make a poll, too, about rewatching season one of House of the Dragon because we love it so much. But, yeah, I we really like it. It's just we know it could be. Like we know the source material now, and we know the direction in which they're kind of bending it away. So then, when you see those bends and certain depictions are bending that way, you immediately get some sort of like narrative push by the uh, show writers. That I'm like, uh, and one of them left. So hopefully that that might have been some of the influence on like making Aegon so um, unreasonably bad. And hopefully they're making people that was a lobster. But yeah, it's wishful thinking. I, I'm not even going to assume that right now. But no, but that's the thing, too. It's this whole negativity thing. Yeah, we're negative about some of this stuff. But you have to understand that everything that we're not negative about, we love. And that's the thing. I, I complain when I when I go see a movie, dude, or a TV show, I air my grievances. The first thing I do with with the guys, right, or my wife is I complain about things I don't like. But what people don't <laughs> yeah. understand is that even though I'm complaining about every single little nitpick that I hate, everything else i liked you know everything else i yeah. liked i didn't just wasn't okay with it i liked it so it's there's actually a lot more positivity in most things unless i say i hate the whole fucking thing it doesn't happen very often hey thanks for watching this video be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and smash that like button or not we don't care <laughs>